Welcome to Champions for the Brokenhearted, where our mission is to bring hope, healing, and resources to those who are hurting. My name is Nick Vujicic, and for the past two years, I've had the privilege of interviewing experts within our 12 Champions initiatives. Along with these interviews, I've been speaking directly to the brokenhearted affected by these various topics through the Jesus Cares series. Today, I want to share a message with you, a message that I believe affects many people in this nation and around the world. Here it is. We titled it, Jesus Cares for the Veteran. Now, first of all, if you are a veteran, I want to honor you and say thank you for your service and your sacrifice. I also want you to know that maybe you're listening to me and you've lost someone that you love who was active in duty or suicidal. Maybe it was your father. Maybe it was your mother. Family and friends of veterans. It's a community that as I speak around the world, can I say it this way? Before I even talk at bases all around the world, I ask God for an extra measure of grace and mercy because I've been with many, many people and I look at them and I know about the pain, but I just can't imagine. And so first and foremost, as a U.S. citizen, as you have served, thank you for your service. If your family member has served, thank you for your sacrifice, your faith, your courage, your love and support. I love you all very, very much. And I actually have this studio in the DFW area of Texas. And I want you all to know that me and my own sons, each Christmas, um, we buy blankets, food, um, socks. Um, We try and help the homeless veterans in our own backyard. And to me, as an evangelist, knowing that as Christians, we have a lot of resources. We understand that there's a lot of ministries out there. But in Texas, to be a state which is the apparently approximately seventh largest economy in the world, and knowing that we as a church, if we could just unite I don't think we should really be having whatsoever one homeless veteran uh, in our backyard. And I want to say, I'm sorry, straight up. I am sorry that the church has not done more. I want to say I'm sorry, first and foremost, that we haven't really educated ourselves in how to approach veterans and PTSD of all sorts. I'm sorry that our churches haven't really offered professional counseling, but I want you to know there's some good news behind all this. And first and foremost, I do want to say I love you and I'm sorry. And um, we are with you. We stand with you. We stand with our veterans and the families and friends affected with veterans and their situations that it's difficult to describe. But I want you to know with all my heart that even though I've never been in combat myself, I know that all of us in our society know we could do more. And um, I want you to know that um, I learned so much personally about what veterans are going through here in the U.S. during my interviews with Jeremy Stelnecker, co-founder of Um, Mighty Oaks Foundation and today's CEO of the foundation. And I want you to know that if you're someone who maybe is watching and you're not a family member of a veteran or you don't know a veteran, but your heart's being stirred about how to help the brokenhearted. um, I'm telling you right now, there are some interviews, but this one was one of my favorite um, with Jeremy. And I really encourage you to check it out and maybe pass it along. 
Um, I want to say that the Mighty Oaks Foundation are true champions for veterans. And I know that there are other nonprofits out there and God bless them all, but I've never found anyone that really um, is healing the hurting um, and actually meeting the veterans with the resources that they need right there, right then. And um, I want you to know that this is something that's been heavy on my heart for many, many years. When me and my ministry team, I think it was um, back in 2014, um, they came crying, um, hearing the official suicide rate of veterans per day, which hasn't actually moved for a very long time at anywhere between 32 and 36 suicides per day. And that suicide rate uh, that we were mourning and grieving over um, has still haven't, hasn't really moved since then at 22 per day. And in addition to this, a similar number of veterans also die from natural causes. We're talking about losing 44 veterans per day. It's unfortunate to lose valuable men and women every single day. And part of the reason for this is a sense of despair, hopelessness, and feeling like a burden. And that's what I personally can relate to in feeling hopeless in some degree, feeling like a burden or in a hole that I just can never get out. I just want you to know that some of you have physical wounds from war. Maybe you have missing limbs. And I can't even understand that because I don't know how it was to have limbs and then lose it. Some of you, maybe many of you, the wounds are not just physical, but they go much deeper where the eye cannot see. Your wounds may be a result of your sacrifice. And I want to remember every day that whatever sacrifice we all make, that God has called us to make, we thank God that Jesus made a sacrifice for your peace and your healing as well. Not just to go to heaven, not just to know that one day the pain will go away, but that we can actually experience peace and healing now. And if you're a veteran and battling physical, mental, or emotional trauma as a result of your mission, your deployment, things that you've seen that you can't unsee, I believe God truly wants to speak to you today and give you the same hope and healing he gave me. Jesus paid the ultimate price for our freedom and healing, and he wants to set you free from mental and emotional anguish. You can't just pray away trauma or emotional anguish. Sometimes it's difficult to first admit that we can't do it on our own. You see, when God's called you to be a courageous warrior and going on the front line, that takes courage. And as courageous as that is, and faith-driven as that is, knowing and convicted, this is what my mission is, even the most courageous cannot find the courage to at least say, I'm hurting. It takes courage to admit, humility to admit a brokenness in our hearts. It's easier to just not talk, not show emotions, and just build the walls around us. And I understand that that's our self-preservation, our human nature. But I want you to know that if we do open up by the grace of God, our heart, our mind, our thoughts, I've got some good news for you. We'd first of all like to hear from you, 
If you don't have anyone to talk to, write to us. Go to nickvministries.org and write to us an email. Um, we can get anyone from Mighty Oaks Foundation to also connect with you. We also can connect a one-on-one -on -one counselor with you. And I want you to know that sometimes when we feel depressed, when we feel hopeless, sometimes it takes a one-on-one -on -one session, maybe multiple, to get counseling. I'm not saying that some prescription drugs are not of God. No, God uses that. But more often than not, I've seen more people who are taking anywhere between 15 and 30 different medications per day because that's what they've been told to do. And I feel that if you feel that that's a little bit too much. Can I just say, come to Jesus, find a Christian counselor, and with the right physical medical doctor as well, monitoring these things, sometimes chemical imbalance. I understand that. I understand science. I understand medical to a little point to say this. We need spiritual, emotional, and mental counseling as well as whatever else we need. But the root of root <laughs> is Jesus. And I want to remind you that all throughout the Bible, we see men of war depending on God for healing and deliverance. King David, he needed his soul to be healed. He expresses the anguish of his soul throughout many of the Psalms. Even Jesus repeated a prophetic Psalm of David when he was on the cross. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In Psalm 22. Sometimes we feel that God's completely forsaken us. Sometimes in our anguish, in our um, mental anguish, we go to different things, drugs, alcohol, sex, pornography, other addictions, I don't know. But I'll tell you right now, whatever that looks like, some of that shame and condemnation even make us feel worlds apart from the love of God, when the love of God is right here. You see, God didn't come for the healed. He came for the broken. He didn't come for the people that had it all together. He came for the lost, the hopeless, and the hurting, and the anguished. David, he found his strength in the presence of God. And that's expressed in Psalm 27. He says, Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. Our faith conquers our fears. Now, you may not be on the front line, and seeing the army encamped in the physical, but we know that there's a spiritual war and there are demonic powers and principalities of darkness that are against you every day. In fact, everyone. And it's the war between life and death, God and Satan, angels and demons. And without prayer and understanding and knowledge of God's plan for your life and the covering of prayer and the family of God, surrounding you and your family to also cover you with prayer and love, loving action as well, just hanging out. It gets lonely. We may not see the guns, but we hear them in our head. But I want you to know that God can set you free from all of this. Joshua was another man of war who needed courage to enter the promised land. Some of you come out of combat a long time ago, but this war, check this out. God is saying to you, just like he said to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. 
God is with you, my friend. Jesus was a warrior for you, and his wounds paid the price for your healing. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says that he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and by his wounds we are healed. Some of you feel like you're in darkness without any hope of freedom. But I want you to know that there is the presence of God that heals all wounds. And he wants to speak to you directly from his word and heal every area of your life right now. Let me read this real quick. Psalm 107 verses 13 to 16 Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and burst their bonds apart. God, my friend, has never abandoned you. He's never left you. He loves you. He wants to turn your pain into purpose. I love also how Psalm 147 verse 3 says, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. I want you to know that God has not forgotten you. He has not turned his face away from you. He is not against you. He is for you and he's fighting for you. Talk about an ally, the ally of allies. Come on. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 15 says, Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. What does that mean? You know the battles in your mind and your heart. And you know that you don't have the strength to overcome it. You would like to. And if you could, You would have already. I want you to know that your victory is found in Jesus Christ because it's not by our power or by our might. It's by his spirit. And my friends, by faith, you will overcome. 1 John 5 verse 4 says, Everyone born of God is victorious and overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has conquered and overcome the world. Our continuing persistent faith in Jesus, the Son of God. My friends, maybe you've not given your life to Jesus fully. Maybe actually you hate God because he didn't show up the way you think he should have shown up. How he should have shown up. I want to encourage you today to lay everything down and give your full surrender to him. Trust him with your future. Trust him when he says he has a hope and a future. Trust him with your pain and your wounds. And trust him that you can endure one day at a time with his strength. I tell many people all around the world that when you don't get a miracle, you can still be one. You see, what's one thing that the enemy cannot take away or the world cannot steal or destroy is your story. And you're still here. And for as long as you're breathing, your story ain't done yet. And I believe that your story is not just as powerful as any story, but as a patriot here in America, your story as a veteran or a wife to a veteran or a husband to a veteran or a child of a veteran or a brother of a veteran, a sister of a a mother and father of a veteran, 
There are many people asking God, where are you? And do you know what the most important thing is that I've seen? In seeing God move and inspiring hope and faith in other people's lives are through stories. Stories like mine, (laughs) stories like yours. I can't, in my mind, really be used as powerful as you if you've been there or you are there. And if you're there, God's going to open up that prison gate. He's going to he's going to burst those bounds and uh, what do you call it? Shackles and handcuffs and make you free and breathe again and taste and see that he is good and drink from the, the living waters, not just go to church and no, having the presence of God, turning on worship music and memorizing a scripture per week. Asking God, God, what do I need to stop doing? God, what do I need to start doing? How do I live for you? How do I get to know you? Whatever that first step looks like, it always starts with prayer. And maybe you're like, oh, no, Nick, I I need to stop swearing. I need to stop doing this and this and this before I really surrender to God and give my life to him. Oh, Nick, that sounds really nice that God can use my story, but I'm, I'm not talking about thriving. I'm just thinking about surviving. Well, let me tell you, sometimes when you don't get a miracle, God can still use you to be one. And that's what I tell many, many people. God's not done with you yet. And if you're today hanging on, hold on to Jesus. Not hoping for a better day. Not hoping for clouds in your mind to go away. Not hoping for memories to disappear. Holding on to Christ who can give you all that healing himself. And so I want to say a prayer with you. Maybe you've not given your life to Jesus or You did, but you walked away. Once you know he loves you very, very much, he has a plan for you. Would you now just bow your heads with me? Here we go. Would you say this prayer out loud? Say, dear Jesus, I come to you today and I thank you for your sacrifice. You died on the cross for my sins. And I know I'm a sinner. And I know I'll never deserve heaven. But Jesus, you paid the price, the ultimate sacrifice. You died that I may live in eternity. God, please help me. Help me to turn away from sin. I repent. I'm so sorry of everything I've done. Please forgive me. Come into my life and fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may know you, your peace, your healing, and your strength one day at a time. Show me how to live. Teach me how to pray. And help me to remember all of your promises in the Bible. I thank you, Lord, that you love me and you'll never leave me. When I fall and when I fail, Thank you, Lord, that you'll pick me up and you'll carry me as I strive to be who you want me to be and learn how much you truly love me. In Jesus' name, 
I pray. Amen. Awesome. I want you to know that this prayer is just the first step of your journey with God. Walking with Jesus is a daily relationship and continuous surrender. Renewing your mind with the word of God. Reading Psalm 91. Reading Psalm 139. Reading Philippians, the four chapters. These are the Psalms. And the book of Philippians have been something I've always gone back to. To thank God. Spending time in prayer and worship. Gathering with believers who will encourage you. All these things are important ways to continue growing in your faith. Friend, if you've prayed that prayer with me to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to send you eight videos over the next eight days as a gift from me to you. You can't find these videos anywhere else. And these videos will help you take your first steps in your new relationship with Jesus. Simply get your phone out and text the word Jesus to the number 51237. That's 51237. Text the word Jesus. If you're someone who is suffering as a result of serving in combat, I want you to know that there is no shame in what you're going through. And I encourage you to seek professional care and biblical counseling today. And first go to mightyoaksprogram.org. You do not need to fight this battle alone. And remember, Jesus cares for the veteran and he cares for all of us. My friend, I care for you. Bye-bye. I want to also speak real quick directly to those who want to be champions alongside of us to help heal more people who are brokenhearted. If you're passionate about serving the brokenhearted, would you prayerfully consider joining our circle of champions and financially supporting us in our mission to reach the world with the hope of Jesus Christ? Your monthly partnership helps us to translate and distribute more of this content into the hands of the brokenhearted worldwide. And remember, you can also register to take our champions caregiver training and become a certified caregiver for the brokenhearted within your local community. You'll be able to learn how to administer one-on-one biblical counseling. Many churches don't have good Christian counseling, and this, my friend, is an incredible ministry where you can be a blessing to someone in your community. Check out the link below, championcaregiver.org, for more information, including the specialization for this topic. I love you, God bless you, and we'll see you next time.